Hello, today we're going to work on a problem that is known with the techniques SLB 101, manual, SLB 202, semi automatic, and SLB 303, automatic turntables from techniques. These are made in 1981. They share the, um, the motor drive board and the motor uh, mechanism is, is the same and uh, they have an inherent problem with noise that I can demonstrate on this turntable right here. You should be able to pick up and hear the, uh, the clicking noise made by the motor. Uh, the internet suggests that this is a point of impending doom for the motor. It's really not. It's a, it's a piece, a plastic piece inside the motor that is deteriorating and becoming loose and rubbing on the casing. And I'm going to demonstrate in this video uh, how to repair that motor and clean up the inside of the casing so that the piece doesn't rub anymore. All right, so I've removed, I've flipped the turntable over. You remove the platter, uh, remove the mat, uh, disconnect the belt to get the platter off. Uh, you flip the turntable over, uh, remove all the screws to remove the, uh, the wood-based cover. Uh, and then this is the motor control board. And as you can see here, it says motor and control. So this is the motor control board underneath. We're going to remove four screws that hold the board in. And they're sitting on rubber bushings as the suspension for the motor. It's kind of the anti-vibration. I'm also going to remove two screws here that are holding this metal plate, which is over the top of the motor, which we'll also um, need to remove. So we're going to get those screws removed in short order. Now, the problem in the motor itself is related to um, a plastic clip that is holding a ring magnet. The ring magnet provides the speed uh, sensing for a Hall IC chip that is mounted on the board on the inverse side of the board right here. So as soon as we flip this over, pull the wires up from the little clips that are holding them in place. These sometimes these are actually glued in. And that one appears to be glued. Okay, so here's the top of your motor, and this is the bracket that I pulled the two screws off of so that this was actually laying over the top of the motor like this, so that it had to be removed in order for this the motor to be removed. So while you have this apart, if you're familiar with what deoxit chemical is, these are trim pots for 33 and a third and 45 RPM speeds on the turntable. And it's a good idea anytime you have turntable apart like this to go ahead and deoxidize the contact surfaces on those uh, trim pots and also on the speed uh, pitch adjust pot that's located up here uh, on the underside of the control panel in the front. But for right now, we're just going to deal with the, uh, with the motor itself. So you can see the motor is just a, it's got like a rubber housing around the metal casing. Uh, we're also going to lubricate this shaft and the in the uh, shaft on the other end when we have this apart. So the Hall IC chip is actually setting underneath the motor in a recess in the casing. So let you go ahead and stop that the board. These are the two motor leads here and here, and we have to desolder those. And because this is a magnetic field sensitive chip and the soldering gun is going to produce a magnetic field i'm going to heat the gun up uh, away from the motor assembly and once it gets hot i'm going to use the residual heat to uh, melt the solder joints and then pull the motor off the board so this will take a second to get hot 
release the trigger. Yeah, we got it to move. And we're gonna do it again for the other tab on the other side. Uh, you don't have to worry about which tab is which a pole on the motor because the the recess in the motor casing around the Hall IC chip is uh, is going to dictate how it reassembles. So we flip the board back over. You now see the Hall IC chip on the board, and this opening in the motor uh, casing goes over the that when it goes back in. So these two pins can't be can't be reversed and put in the wrong way. It has to go in one way like that. Okay, so I've removed the uh, the plastic cover off the top of the motor, and if you spin the the, the uh, armature, you can actually hear the clicking inside. Aim my pointer. So the issue is with the plastic uh, holder here that's holding this magnetic ring. This magnet turns uh, over the top of the hall uh, speed chip a magnetic fields IC chip, and that feeds the motor controller with information on the speed of the rotation of the motor, and that's how it controls the speed. So something in this mechanism, in, in this holder, is what I found in the past is the problem, and that's what's in there rubbing. So there are four case uh, crimps around the perimeter that hold the plastic end bell into the metal housing of the motor, and we have to pry those back. And then the uh, the two motor uh, uh, armature brushes are actually coming around the side from the, from the two uh, terminals. And we have to actually push those out of the way. I'm going to use a toothpick when I get to that point to push that motor brush, lift that off of the, uh, the commutator plate. Uh, because there, there's a washer up above there that will actually bend that when we remove it. So I'm going to go ahead and pry them and use a set of diagonal cutters. And I'm going to use that to pry these tabs back uh, so that we can actually remove this portion of the uh, end bell housing. So I'm going to go ahead and it's going to take a few minutes to do that. And I'm not going to force people to sit and watch that because it's kind of irrelevant. So what we're seeing here is this plastic ring that's actually the retainer for this ring magnet. You can see the magnet actually is moving and that's loose because the retainer that holds it in place is no longer complete. Uh, this portion's still intact, although partially broken off, and I'm going to go ahead and break that the rest of the way off with a pair of tweezers because if it's not apart now, it'll come apart later. And there are two pieces of this. One's right here, and it's wedged down between the armature and the motor magnet. And there's another piece over here that's similarly wedged down there. And that's why this motor is rubbing. And uh, any, of, any of this rotation that causes this to... Uh, there, it fell out. Uh, Anytime any of these pieces are in there and they're rubbing on either the magnet or they're stuck in the magnet, they're going to bind the motor. If they hit uh, any of the recesses in the underside of the bell housing on the end, they're going to make clicking noises and that type of stuff. So now this guy is freewheeling. And um, what we need to do now that we don't have the, the little retaining clip to hold the ring magnet in is we're going to go ahead and glue that in. Um, so that, uh, so that it stays in place. So the first thing I'm going to do is take some rubbing alcohol on the Q-tip. And we're going to go ahead and clean the surface really good. Because I don't want any kind of, uh, lubrication or oil or anything in there that's, I want this glue to stick and stay stuck. <sighs> I'm going to do the same thing to the underside of the ring magnet where it's going to uh, be glued to the uh, to that clip. So the glue I'm using is a rubber adhesive that uh, uh, is available in several places, but I get it from uh, 
Midwest Speaker Repair. It's the same glue that gets used for gluing. Can't get the cap off. That's how good the glue is. Uh, it's used for gluing um, uh, foam surrounds to, uh, to woofers. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of glue on the ring. I'm gonna spread that around. It doesn't take very much. This stuff stays, um, doesn't dry hard, it stays flexible. Um, and it just adheres to everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the ring on there. Press it down into place and kind of slide it around to spread the glue out. You don't want to put very much glue on there because you don't want it to raise the ring up from the mounting surface at all. You want it to stay pretty much where it was originally mounted. And uh, that should pretty much stay in place now. So we're going to go ahead and lubricate the, um, the motor shaft on the other end. I've got a small needle oiler. Uh, it's a synthetic glue that's uh, available in many places. Bought this off the internet, so I'm going to put just a tiny drop right there. The motor shaft spin that to draw it into the bearing and wipe off the excess that was a commercial for the glue we're going to do the same thing on the other end there's a uh, a bronze bushing in the bell housing and we're going to you can use this needle oiler and we're going to push the brush out of the way because we do not want this on the, the electrical bearing surfaces in the commutator. And any excess that we get in there, like that little drop right there, we want to make sure we mop up. There is a plastic retainer, a plastic washer on the end here uh, at the end of the commutator that kind of functions as a... Uh, uh, lubrication barrier and um, we want to make sure that we uh, have that in place and don't have too much oil in there as soon as this is pretty much set which doesn't take very long um, this glue it's got a 24 to 48 hour curing time but the reality is it really sets up really really fast and uh, I probably couldn't get that ring off there right now if I had to so now I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the bell housing. Now before I took this apart, uh, I put some, uh, used a Sharpie to put some markings on there to make sure I align that so I know how that aligns. The same toothpicks I used when I took this apart to spread the commutator brush. If we look from underside what I just did, there's little slots in the housing there to allow you to push the brush up out of the way. And that's, that's to get the brush out over this plastic ring so that that plastic ring doesn't bend the brush up when you slide it on there. So I'm gonna get this kind of in position. And I'm gonna use the toothpicks to push the brushes out of the way. Once I get them pried back, I should be able to drop this down. So this is just kind of popped into place. The, the little crimps that were here have been bent out of the way and those are no longer gonna function to, uh, to crimp. I haven't found a way to recrimp those yet. Um, so what I'm going to do is use the, I'm gonna pry this back up just a hair and I'm gonna put a little bit of that same contact cement, that same rubber cement underneath this lip to hold this, uh, the bell housing on the end of the motor. So I'm going to put the, the glue in here in about three or four places around the perimeter. I not get too much on there because it's going to make a big mess. I want to make sure I get it underneath that lip and where it actually hits and contacts the, the motor casing. Push that back down. I may have lifted that enough to get the motor brush above that bearing, so let me, above the washer. There we go. 
So that snapped back in, it's realigned, and we'll go ahead and wipe the excess glue. Just the more glue we have there, the longer it's gonna take to dry. So that's back in case, it back uh, aligned with the case, the original mark, and you can see just with a few seconds, I can't even hardly turn that thing now. So the glue dries really, really, really fast. Now the motor spins freely and no clicking noises, no rubbing noises. Everything's uh, nice and freed up. So we're going to solder the motor back into the board. So I'm gonna get everything out of the way. rubber boot back over the top of the motor. Now, while I had the camera off, I cleaned up the excess uh, solder from the board uh, so that I could reinstall this properly. So the opening in the casing goes over the Hall IC chip. So the two tabs line up with the two holes, just like so. And you can see the tabs sticking up through the openings. So I just need to resolder those. That looks like it's tight enough to stay in place. So we're gonna solder this the same way we desoldered it. We're gonna heat the gun up and allow the residual heat in the gun uh, to melt the solder. We don't wanna get the magnetic field of the soldering gun uh, around the, IC, the Hall IC chip. Okay, we're going to reinstall the board. Put the wires back in place. Okay, so this screw here has the little star washer on it. That's actually a grounding point. The other screw doesn't have the star washer, so I'm gonna make sure that goes back in the same spot. Lost my screwdriver. rotate the screw backwards and let it drop into its original threads in the uh, plastic post that uh, prevents repeated uh, uh, screwing and unscrewing from tearing up the threads. Come on, won't drop. In the right spot, there it goes. So those two screws are holding, reconnecting the metal plate that goes around the top of the motor. Those are nice and snug. And then these four screws with the washers just go down over the rubber bushings. And while we were off camera, I, I did deoxidize the uh, pitch pots both the 33 and a third in the 45 pot, as well as the, the main pitch control on the front of the board and the speed selector switch, which doesn't get deoxid, that gets a uh, contact cleaner. So reset all the wires and all the little holders. 
Okay, so the reassembly is done. Um, we're going to go ahead and pause for a moment. moment. I'm going to reinstall the bottom of the table, flip the table back over, and uh, we'll pick up when we reinstall the platter. Okay, we've got the, the bottom reinstalled back on the table. Um, the belt is still on the underside of the platter. If I can get my fingernails to get under the belt, we're going to install the platter just loop the belt over the pulley. Uh, one thing to note, we, we do have it plugged in. This mat has a little split in it. So when we do this, now we have silence off the motor. Now I do want to point out one thing. Anytime you flip over a turntable, the mechanism that causes the auto return on a, a semi-automatic table or an automatic table that little lever can be engaged by the movement of the table being flipped over. So when I first moved this and turned it on, it automatically shut off. It will do that one time. And now when I put the arm back over and start the motor, it will stay put. So now we have complete silence in the motor. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the pitch. And adjust the speed and adjust the pitch so we're getting both speeds and they're nice and stable so table is fixed <laughs>